My name is Aditi Varshne, and I am the Zero Waste Communities Coordinator at the Global Alliance for Incinerator Alternatives, also known as Gaia, based in New York City. Um, and I sort of look at zero waste from an environmental justice perspective. Um, I got started in this sort of field because I was a student studying environmental science because like a lot of other people, I love nature. Um, and as a young person, I'm really concerned about climate change um, because I know that I will be growing into, you know, my older age and it, the world is going to be drastically different than the world that anyone who's come before me has been through. So that's just something that's like, I feel like weighing a lot of people in my generation down, um, that knowledge. And so I was studying environmental science and it ended up being kind of hard for me to stay focused on some of the more mainstream environmental issues when I'm a young person, when I'm a woman of color, I'm an immigrant, um, I've grown up in large cities my whole life. Um, so there are just so many social justice issues that I care really deeply about, um, some of which I am affected by. And so I started thinking about where these issues of social justice and environmentalism intersect. And that's when I started learning about environmental justice. And I started applying that lens of thought to all of the areas of the environmental side of the work um, that I was sort of interested in addressing. The US Army Corps of Engineers has called climate change a threat multiplier that essentially exacerbates pre-existing vulnerabilities. So to me, environmental justice is sort of that. It is the confluence of social justice issues and environmentalism. So it's a form of environmentalism that recognizes the way that systemic forms of oppression worsen the effects of climate change and environmental degradation. So it's the understanding that low income communities, communities of color, and my brothers and sisters in the global south, which at one point has been referred to as um, developing countries, those uh, tend to be interchangeable terms in case um, you guys haven't heard of them uh, or heard of that way to say it. Um, it, it, it's how those communities are disproportionately burdened by pollution and climate change and environmental problems, even though they tend to be the ones who are least responsible for causing those problems in relation to their sort of consumption and living habits. And it's about building a relationship both with the earth and with each other, because both those things are very intertwined. Um, it's about sort of recognizing that the people who are most impacted by environmental issues are the ones who need to be at the forefront of solutions because those are the folks who've been dealing with those problems on the ground and ha probably have insight into how to handle them. Um, you know, like, even though the, the people most impacted need to be at the forefront of solutions, you guys are probably noticing that they're not. Um, so many people are dealing with poverty, with racism, with xenophobia and discrimination against people with disabilities and all those forms of systemic oppression that, you know, how are you going to get people to come to a meeting about zero waste if we don't acknowledge and incorporate those very real day to day struggles and experiences. So environmental justice means that everyone has the right to a clean and healthy environment and in order to do that we need to be tackling the other forms of injustice in our environmental work and we need to be also addressing the cumulative impact of past harms that keep building and building and building on each other and so this means centering and prioritizing the needs and voices of environmental justice communities so that's a little bit about what that means to me. I 
one of the biggest impacts that our current waste management systems have on environmental justice communities is the fact that they produce a lot of climate emissions and it's low income communities and communities of color, you know, environmental justice communities who are hit first and worst by the impacts of climate change. So right off the bat, that is an environmental justice impact of a uh, outdated harmful waste system. Another one is where these waste management facilities are actually located. Um, incinerators um, kind of spew out a toxic brew of pollutants that cause really serious health problems in the communities that they're located in, like cancers and asthma and developmental problems. Um, 80% of them in the United States are located in low-income communities of color. So like who is this harmful form of waste management affecting the most? Like we see that very clearly in this statistic. Um, there's also a global impact. Um, the US and other Western countries for a long time have been shipping their low quality, poorly sorted plastic waste to countries abroad until 2018 that used to be China. But China sort of said no more to these imports of Western waste. And these countries like the US sort of rerouted and started sending a whole lot of waste to low income Southeast Asian countries and some other countries in the region like Indonesia and Malaysia who were unequipped to deal with this massive, massive uh, volume of American waste. So a lot of that waste that gets shipped over there doesn't get handled in the way that, you know, everyday Americans think their recyclables are getting handled. They're not getting recycled most of the time. They are getting burnt. Um, they're, you know, spreading out into the environment. Um, they're causing a lot of environmental and health damage in the communities that they end up in. And I'm sure we've all seen statistics about, you know, how countries like China and India are, are some of the biggest ocean polluters in the world. That is because of the products that originate in the West, whether it's because they're global companies producing, you know, goods that get used and then discarded after single use, um, you know, in China or Thailand or wherever, or it's the literal trash getting shipped over there. So our systems are more interconnected than you think. And so it's always really important to be like, I think thinking about like, what is my role in this thing that doesn't seem to be directly connected to me at first glance, you know? I think another issue with waste management in terms of environmental justice is who is most affected by ocean pollution. So those are kind of like some of the major issues, both domestically um, internationally, and then also in the long run with climate change. I would say research what organizations in your area are already doing environmental justice work. Um, sign up for their newsletter, follow them on social media, go to their meetings and rallies, which I guess now maybe virtual, which might be a good thing if you're someone who's kind of strapped for time. I don't know. Um, and amplify their voices and work. Show up for them and spread what they're saying, basically. Um, like taking initiative on your own to do, you know, like your analysis of what you think is right is, is great, but you'll likely have a greater impact if you channel your energy and efforts and resources through the organizers who've been doing this work on the ground. And be ready to do things that may be uncomfortable or unfamiliar. Like community organizers are always looking for people who are willing to take that risk of like going door to door, knocking on people's doors. Not obviously in these times, but you know, nowadays people are doing more phone banking than ever. A lot of people hate cold calling strangers on the phone, but it's an essential part of moving along a campaign. And they people always, always, always need people to take on those tasks. So get ready to do things that, you know, might be a little unfamiliar, awkward at first, but they're needed. Um, I would also say um, check your privilege, um, understand the power dynamics between you and the people, um, you know, that you're working with and understand that 
different aspects of one's identity hold different kinds of power. Like for example, with me, I'm a woman of color, but I'm also college educated and that represents different levels of marginalization and privilege. So just kind of have that in the back of your mind as you enter a space. Also don't enter with the idea maybe of saving an environmental justice community, even though you may be super well intentioned, it's important to enter with the idea of collective responsibility for societal problems that environmental justice communities happen to experience first and worse first and worst because of, you know, other societal factors. I think modeling your values is definitely one thing. And that's like, you know, one of the most like, you know, widespread ways of embracing zero waste um, is to sort of act in the way that you want to build the world. So standing up for racial justice, standing up for economic equality, um, living a zero waste lifestyle where it is accessible to you, but also advocating for zero waste to be accessible to everyone who doesn't maybe have the time or resources to sort of do those more, like to make those zero waste purchases, which may have a little bit bigger like initial investment or to spend that time making like homemade cleaners and stuff like that. Um, I think that, you know, you're reducing the volume of waste going through those polluting facilities. But I think more importantly, we can advocate or even like build changes that decrease the volume of waste on a bigger level. So can you get your kid's school to go zero waste? Can you get your church or temple to go zero waste? Um, can you set up a compost collection program at your local community garden? If you do those things, how do you inspire others to join you and scale those initiatives up? Um, can you help out with a campaign to bring universal recycling or composting to your city? Can you help with the campaign to get your city to eliminate waste on all municipal properties or commit to zero waste by so-and-so date? So, you know, you can do that both on the individual level, but then also it's really, really important to carry that same energy into the more systemic collective level. I used to work with the awesome black woman from Brooklyn, super cool marine biologist, Ayanna Elizabeth Johnson, when I was in college. And her outlook on this field as like a woman of color mentor was huge in shaping the way that I see the world. Um, and she always used to say that including the voices of environmental justice communities in this work isn't just the right thing to do, it's a smart thing to do because if you're not engaging them and listening to them, you're missing out on the whole range of solutions that would benefit everyone.